we know more about most of the planets in our solar system than we do about the deep ocean. But the reason isn't because we haven't been curious. The reason is because we haven't had the tools to go down and look, and we have them now. And the truth is, is that every incremental step that we take to learn more about the deep ocean helps us understand more about the entire planet. So 10 years ago, when these sites were first found, we didn't think that the octopus nurseries were viable. When we came here in June, that was one of our first questions because we saw octopus being born on the screen. Then we were wondering, are we gonna see the same thing in December? We didn't know, I was kind of nervous. Uh, and again, on our very first dive, we saw baby octopus being born. So we answered that question. It was significant because it said this population is persevering. I mean, previously, 3,100 meters, I mean, come on, this is one of the deepest benthic octopuses we know of. I mean, we're talking about 100 good-sized octopuses, and to come back and to see a slew of them with babies, successful babies, hatchlings, it was just, it's like, this is going on. We still have questions about whether the animal health, the octopus health, is influenced by the microbes that might live in the hydrothermal spring waters. At the simplest level, microbes are single-celled organisms and they fill out about 90% of the diversity on our planet. And they carry out just a lot of basic functions on our planet that process nutrients, that process carbon, process the food we eat, but we don't think about them very often because we can't see them. And so we're collecting that water and then when we bring it up on the ship, we're doing a bunch of experiments with it to try to figure out what the microbes are doing. We know we're going under you know, rapid change, but we have no baseline for much of the deep ocean. In the next 20 years, will it look the same? And there's a lot of reasons to have a good baseline. And so human health and planetary health. So we think that there's probably like 15,000 to over 100,000 seamounts on the Earth. There's only two places on the planet where we have studied how water moves between mountains. And this is a globally significant process. So what we're learning here in Costa Rica is going to inform processes happening all over the planet. The amount of water moving is enormous. So what this expedition is letting us do is start that process really map out what's happening in different places. And ultimately, we'll need to come back multiple times and survey more of the features to try to put the whole story together, to understand this network of plumbing that allows water to flow in, come out, and support all of the life. One of the things that I'm so excited about with this cruise is that half of our science party is coming from Costa Rica. And for many of them, this is their first time getting a chance to come to the deep sea, which is the majority of their country. This is gonna just create a new interest in studying the deep sea in Costa Rica, build up expertise in Costa Rica. Our last expedition, we collected 400 times more deep sea specimens of some types of animals than they had in their museum collection. For years to come, this is going to have an impact on the study of the deep sea in Costa Rica.